Are we okay to start? Okay. If you want, if you, everyone's on a laptop, you can, you can either install the iPad app brand if you want, or you can go to nearpod.com. For this session, it was kind of was screwed up on the fly. And um, the reason for it is I really want to demonstrate what Nearpod can do. I know you're both from Wallingford. Yeah, no? Okay, sorry. Um, and it's great in the sense that it's accessible web-based via app or our Chrome app. And it's a really cool tool to use in your classroom for uh, teaching and for collecting data. And so if you want to either go to nearpod.com and just sit for a sec or get the app right now, and I will start the class. So we're just going to demo how it works. So let me open it up. So what it is is a presentation tool that you can teach from, and what it will allow you to do is um, share your screen or your presentation with your students um, in an interactive manner. And what you can do is create presentations and then invite students via a pin to enter their presentation. Let me close this. To, um, so you give students a pin to enter the presentation. And what it will then do is give you com really complete control over what they're doing on their computer. So whether it be an iPad, a Chromebook, a laptop. Okay. So you would have your presentation stored either in your Nearpod account, either online, in your Chrome app, or on the iPad, and then you would go ahead and launch your presentation. Okay. And what it generates is a PIN number that you can then give out to your students. So I'm going to give you this PIN so you can try it, and we can kind of have a tutorial of how it works for students and what they see. So the PIN number, or the PIN is KDCMO. No, it's okay. <laughs> you should be able to go to, oh, you want to log out because you already have an account. Oh, yeah. You're going to log in as a student oh, okay. and enter that PIN number. Oh, KDCMO. What's that? It's like a joint session. Yep. You can just join the session. Oh, just join yep. the session. So when, when the username part is what you're going to create as a teacher, and we're going to go back and review that after, but I want you to just give you the experience of what it could be for your students and how you can kind of deliver the instruction. Okay. Fran, are you there? Yeah. Okay. Is it similar to Socrates? Yes. Like it, but you can get a little bit more from it. So what you'll see is, what should have happened on your screen is that you've advanced to the next slide with me. Okay? So it allows you to create presentations that are engaging. So you can connect in a variety of ways. And again, the Chrome app, if you're a Chromebook school, is going to be available next week. Okay? Every class or presentation generates its own PIN that kids can access on an app, a phone, or um, a laptop or a computer. Let me just scroll through all this. That's just troubleshooting. So now my screen is going to look a little bit different than yours. It's asking you to register for this presentation. So on my end, what it's doing is telling me who's viewing the presentation. And as we go to the next few steps, it's going to allow us to collect information from you. So if you want to go ahead and enter your information as a student, what we'll get is I'll start seeing on my end as a teacher who's registering for my class or my presentation. There we go. Can we be in the same room? No? Okay, so let's see. Some funky things going. Oh, the flash is what's hurting us. I don't think we have this like Chrome. Oh, I don't have YouTube or maybe. You're fine on your end? Mm hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Let me try it. Maybe it didn't update. Well, if you could, sure. Lindsay wouldn't go yeah, sit and I cannot what? sit with her so she can see how it works. Okay. 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 
So before I show this, what you have is when you go to slides that are interactive, it's going to give you the option of taking away the share feature or allowing you to share with students here. So if you envision yourself as sitting in a computer lab or a classroom where kids have earbuds or headphones, you would, um, so I apologize in advance if everyone starts playing. But I think I have my volume. So I'm not going to play it for a long time because you, so if you're teaching in a classroom, it allows students to see this together, okay? I'm going to get off this page so we all don't go crazy together, okay? But it, it allows the child to receive the video on your end, okay? In the um, pro feature of the app, which is a paid for service, you can you send this as a presentation and make it available for kids to sign in at night. So if you were trying to, you know, flip your classroom, it's something that they could participate in at home or if they're not in class and you want to post the pin for the day's session. So okay. it does have district licenses. District licenses. It has school, it has specific teacher, and then it goes school, and then it goes district. And you can't do that with the, the website Yes, you can. You're, what you're buying is a subscription that would then um, apply to all the devices that you use. Okay. Um, these are the features that are available. There's a couple that are only available in the Pro feature, which are um, sharing web uh, pages and the homework feature that allows a kid to follow the presentation at their own pace. Everything else is part of the free version. So it's one of those things, it's like, it would be nice to have these, and it might um, allow you to do, be a little bit more dynamic in using it, but you can also still um, use the free feature. The other part of the free feature is that you lose not some of the storage capabilities. So some of your presentations that are a little bit more interactive, you might need to kind of either save them or take them off if you run out of storage. Okay. So one of the features is Drive. So I just I am like so excited to use this. So <laughs> you can ask kids to finish and do activities by taking part in this. So on your end, what you have is an assignment right now, a task to do, and you can actually draw and on. The web-based version, you will use your mouse and answer the questions. And what I have on my end is I'm going to see as you finish the assignment the results here. Don't worry, don't worry about it. <laughs> no pressure. Go to you can go. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have to wait until you're until you um, finish the task. We won't. I won't see it on my end. So what's nice is that when you, yep, yeah. as you collect the um, information, I'm seeing who's done with the assignment in the task, which is nice. And the other part of it is once I have it, I can see on my end who has done what. But if I was to show you, Heather, show yours. <laughs> We won't go over there. If I was to go, oh, I didn't, and I share this out. Sorry, you obviously wouldn't see this on the screen. But if I was to share this out, and it goes, sorry, I'm having a little connection issue. Try it again. Well, I won't go along to it. If the connection was a little better, and I shared this out, it would take Fran's name away, and we could review the responses. So if you think of this like a completing a math problem or science or editing uh, something in English, we could compare people's answers, but I'm not in the share mode, so you would see someone else's work without their name here. So the teacher can choose yeah. someone to show. Absolutely. And the name won't appear. And the name won't appear, but oh, you can look at the answers. So you could put like, a math problem up there, and they could do all the solving with their, with the mouse their, yeah, with their mouse. And, and then you they could do that on smartboard. You could. But what it's doing is allowing all the kids to participate, as opposed to the smartboard, where it might be one or two users at the time. Mm -hmm. So it allows everyone to submit an answer, and then you can share out their responses, and it will hide their name. But at the same time, you're collecting information as you do the presentation for the kids, so you can see what they can do. Do do. I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, so you can also take real-time polls with your students and collect information this way. So what we'll do is take a quick poll. I can see you should have one in front of you.
Yeah, when you see it and you start to you're like, oh my god. That's why I'm like not like a believer of like just saying like one app and let me show, but like really this one, you just like sit there and you're like, oh my god, where have you been? Where have you been on my life? I know it puts a real crimp into the smart, um, sentient yeah. stuff. Yeah. Expensive stuff. I know. <laughs> So really, you just need a device at this point. And once the the Chrome app is launched, it you re- works on a regular PC, though, right? yes, yep. It's I, that's what I said. You don't even want to listen to me anymore. You just are no, but it's it's great. So what it's doing on my end that the kids don't see is I'm seeing who's answering what. I'm getting the live graph. And if I tap it, but sorry, one sec. There we go. Let me go back. And now that I just, there it is. No, and again, I think it's our, our system here that's slowing us down a bit, but I can share this. I don't know if you can see this graph right now. Um, and it's given results without the names. So if we're quick, quickly pulling information, if you're doing this, you know, as a pre-activity, you can see where kids are in their understanding, share the information, and then maybe have one at the end. But it's really great for those kids that don't want to share that want to be anonymous, that they still are actively taking part, and you, you actually get to hear or see what it is they're thinking. Okay. Oh, don't be nervous. You have about to take a quiz. <laughs> okay. So it's nice about this. It's collecting data. It has it by question and what they get for score, and then it's graphing it as well. So when you take this quiz right now, you can try it out. No pressure. So if you look at the um, feedback, right away we're getting responses. We're seeing what questions people are getting right or wrong. So when you're talking about assessing in real time, and I know the people that are getting the question wrong, you did it on purpose so we can demonstrate. (laughs) Thank you so much. Um, But it allows us to see, like for the next part of our teaching, where do we need to go? If most people are getting question three wrong, we know we need to say whatever skill or content area is being taught there right away. So I don't really know that many other devices that allow us to do that. Okay. (laughs) And again, we can, I think you should see the graph on your end now. We can look at the results of our quiz as a class and talk about the results and talk about the answers and the questions. Can it be archived somewhere so you can go back and use it for data? You can save the presentation once you finish the presentation. Yeah. So it's just a great place to gather the information. The next feature um, me, is a part of the gold feature. So I'll show it to you, but it allows you to share websites with your students so they can, once you share it, they will be able to navigate through the website on their own. Okay, but it is part of the gold feature, but again, to me, it's kind of, you're all right. You can, you should be able to see the website now. We're in a sec. This, the website is one that has uh, some pretty, has navigation, so it might be a little slow. Okay. But you should now have control over that website. So if I said, you know, explore, look for an answer, da, da, you can now do that. Can you insert a link to a web page in the free version? Or? No. That's one of the features that you lose in the free version. So it's just kind of, I know. They really get, they, they hook you. You can't help it. But save for the next session. We're giving away three gold versions. I'll try to fix it so at least three of the four of you get it. <laughs> Lindsay, you don't get one. Okay. So again, this, um, this part of it, I'm not going to go through it too much, but it allows students, this is part of the gold version, 
and it allows students to go through the presentation at their own pace. So if they were at home, if you have a homebound student for homework for a flipped classroom or from reading remediation, they can do these same things at home and you can still collect the data on it. Okay. Let me go ahead. Not unless you have the gold version. Which you're giving away. away. I'll try to fix it. I don't know if I can. <laughs> okay. Exactly. I guess. <laughs> oh, there's only four people up for this. Um, we can do that. So um, I just want to give you, and I don't know what time this goes. So let me check. We have what 20 20 minutes. What I wanted to do is give you an opportunity to see the teacher side of it and how you can build presentations. Um, what's really nice about it is if I go, oh, I don't remember how to do it. Well, I'll show you after. Let me end this presentation so you should be able to leave this in a sec. Okay. What's nice about it, and I believe this is only on the app side of it, so we'll have to see if this is going to be true in the Chrome app for it, is in the store. There's hundreds and hundreds of presentations that have already been created by other teachers. Some, a lot of them are free, some you do have to pay for, but you know, sometimes we don't need to reinvent the wheel so you can explore the resources that are available in the store, the Nearpod store. Okay. And let me connect my computer because I will show you the teacher side of it. Yes, you can go ahead and log out of the presentation. I don't know if I can show you how to use it. I'm apologizing because I've never connected a Chromebook to projector yet. Assuming it is this. Oh man, I don't know how to do it. I'm sorry. Apps no. Try again. Try this. Go. Okay. Well, until I can better figure this out, I don't want to take away from the time. There it goes. Oh, help if I spell it right. I apologize in advance if it goes somewhere it's not supposed to be. So to access it, and apparently I don't know how to use anything right now, what you can do is log in or create your, your teacher account. So say that you're a teacher and create your account. And you can right away start creating your presentation. So if you think of, um, really, I found that it was easier and really, in some cases, depending on the device, um, the best place to build your presentation is on the Nearpod, on the web-based version. So that's where you can add your slides. You can import keynotes and PowerPoints and adjust them based on what it is you want to use. Okay. Sorry. Let me grab this window so I can see it better. No, that should be okay. If it's not, you can sign yourself back out and try on the teacher side. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I can start from scratch. Yep. Not, th not that one you're going to lose. 
Okay? Um, let me back up because I was moving too fast. So what you get when you add a new slide, it gives you those same choices. And um, you should, the web-based one, when you do it, it tells you, I believe you when you first make your account, you get it for free for 30 days. And then after that, you lose that feature, of course. They make you hooked and then. But your quizzes, you can do open-ended questions, which is great. So you could have those multiple choice or the quick polling, but you can also do open-ended. So what you do is you construct each slide based on what, what the interaction is going to be. So you can pose a question, give information, whatever it is you want to do, but then add those interactive components. So really for the rest of it, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to play around with it because it is so exciting. So you can envision, and I'll give you the Chromebook here so you can try it out yourself and make your account. Uh, I think you already made one. So you can interact with it and see the features that are available for you because it might be one that you can start using next week. You know, and um, especially in, if you're in a computer lab, getting kids started on assignments, taking it back and forth and giving them that, and having a little bit more control in the computer lab, whether you're in a large class for math. So each time you create a new slideshow or whatever, do you get a new pin for that? Yes. Slideshow? What it was really nice is that you can get a new pin for every time you go into the presentation. So if you have the same class five times in a row, each class would generate its own pin number. So you can have the same presentation. Um, I haven't used it enough to know how many how many you're going to do before you run out, but I would imagine it would be the kind of um, tools that are uh, interactive or media features that you put in. Yeah. So I'm going to unplug this and give everyone just an opportunity to play because it's one. I showed it at a workshop last week, and I was like waiting until there was an hour and a half left of the, because I'm like, once I show you this, you're not going to listen to anything else I say because you're like, oh, my gosh. Um, so that was, yeah, so let me give this to you. And I'll sign myself out. Uh, are you yeah, let's take a look. I hit that big plus sign. And the other part of it, I was thinking, I know Lindsay does this a lot, but for your global classroom, imagine if you were working with a class like somewhere else in the country. You could just say, here's your pen. We're all in the same class. <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't really matter where you are in the world. You can have class students from anywhere. Oh my gosh, I never even thought of that. That's incredible. <laughs> that solves, oh gosh. So again, their um, Chrome app is coming out next week. What I told um, one of the sales reps there is that if your school, you think your school would be interested in something like that, they're very motivated to hear your feedback when it comes out next week to see how, what you think needs to be fixed, added, all of those things. So if you want me to take your information so you can get in touch with them as well, they're very interested to see because they know a lot of Chrome users are here and ready to start using it. So have you made an account before? Yes. Okay. So what you're going to do is you should be able to do login here. Okay. And then it will prompt you to, yeah, there you go. Is, is your, your school so one to one? Mm -hmm. mm, I know. <laughs> I know. And I mean, it's just so funny because everybody wants something a little simpler than bringing mm -hmm. out those centrioles. Yeah. You know, uploading the list. Change, it, it exactly. Just, everything like, should be coming. Right. Everything needs to come from one you device. Have the laptop, like Cameron, you don't. You know, so this is good. So I introduced them to Socrative last Exactly. Year. You know, there, there was a little glitch and they wanted to put their exit questions in and stuff. So there was still a little setup. Um, but, I don't know, this is fun because yeah. it has a poll, it's got a few yeah. things. Right it gives that data program. right away for yeah. the teacher. That's what I like yeah. about it. Nice. I may Thank just you. use this Friday for the <laughs> so This is all I'm getting. Okay. Oh, no. I see it's because of that. I wonder, I'm just wondering if... Uh, when I go to... I tried to log in, like, make a new account, but it's already got my email address in it now. So That's the... Session we were just in. Are you? No, that should be right. I wonder if it's because you're in a, on a Chromebook. It's because she's making it. No, I'm on one. Yeah, you're on one too. Because there are. Did I leave the presentation? Yes. And you went to. 
Well, I think it was Google first, and then I went and tried to do it that yeah. way. Okay, that's it. I don't know how you even got signed out. So the resources are phenomenal oh over here. God. Our Latin teacher, who can never find Latin resources, she was like, there's really actually good presentations. Yeah. <laughs> she was so excited. <laughs> Quick question. Yep. Do you have to be, say I create a presentation, um, do you have to be uh, as a student then with the student? Like, um, if I create a presentation and my students do it, and then Shirley it wants her kids to do it, do we have to be on at the same time, or can she run the whole thing off hers? Well, you would imagine that my guess would be, because unless you have the full version, because it, it's really like the homework side of it where kid, people could be on it independently. Mm -hmm. So you would imagine that you would probably would have to be working off the same maybe account. Okay. I haven't tried like duplicating presentations. You know, some programs where you can like right. take a copy of mine and then make it your own. If we could teach the same, yeah. So the possibilities, I'm guessing that if you try, there is a share feature. Let me try it right now, and I'll see what it will do for your account. So, Lindsay, I'm going to, I have a, I clicked on the share button, which I've never tried before. And let's see what it looks like on your end and I share it to you. So it's going to your email. So now? No, I got it. Oh, okay. that's really weird. Maybe it was the Wi-Fi here with all the craziness that's going on. So I sent it to your school account, so you can tell me what that looks like on your end. So this would be the PIN number you would give to everybody, and they would join in. Oh, it's just like everything all in one. You're collecting data, you're teaching, and you're managing your classroom because they really don't have control over their screen while they're in here. And it prob I'm guessing, I haven't used it with kids, but I've used it with teachers, that it probably increases you know, participation, especially for the kids that you never know what they're thinking. Right? <laughs> it might be good for the first couple weeks of school, too. Checking the clock. So tell me what it looks like, and then we can We'll learn what that means. Um, for what? For the other? If, if I had a PowerPoint, to you know, I found it was easier on the web-based version to do that. Oh, I haven't had. This. It's yeah. a little tricky. Is it okay if I turn my mic off since we're just exploring? Mm -hmm. Thank you.